1949, Cadillac introduced the first of its hardtop coupes as the Model 62 Coupe de Ville. The term Coupe de Ville had been around longer than Cadillac, or even the automobile, as a body style that dates back to carriages. It is essentially the French term for a town car, de ville literally meaning of the town, and coupe being a cut-down version, which is effectively saying it is a small limousine. But obviously, Cadillac's coupe de ville was not a small car. It was 215 inches long and ran on a 126-inch wheelbase, weighing in at 4,200 pounds. Like all 49 Cadillacs, the Coupe de Ville came with the new overhead valve 331 cubic inch V8 with 160 horsepower, and prices started at $3,500. It came with standard power windows and leather interior, and the headliner was done in a pattern to simulate a convertible top. 60 came in 13 and a half seconds, and the quarter mile in 19. The cars were lower and sleeker for 1950, with a longer hood, a one-piece windshield, and a standard hydromatic automatic transmission, replacing the standard three on the tree from the previous year. 1952 models got through the bumper dual exhaust and a gold V-hood emblem to celebrate Cadillac's 50th anniversary, and a new four-barrel carburetor helped bump horsepower to 190. Bigger bumper guards, or bullets, arrived for 1953, and all two-door Model 62s were now hardtops, but the Coupe de Ville's were the better equipped ones. Cadillacs got new styling for 1954, and power steering, a 12-volt electrical system, and an automatic windshield washer became standard. Power steering, windows, and seats remained optional, as did air conditioning and auto-dimming headlights. For 1955, tubeless tires became standard. The Coupe de Ville was joined by a four-door hardtop sedan de Ville for 1956, and a Coupe de Ville with the 305 horsepower power pack did 60 in under 10 seconds and the quarter mile in the low 17 second range. New styling arrived once again for 1957 with a tubular X-frame that proved to be controversial from a safety perspective. For 1958, the Model 62 sedans, which included the sedan de Ville, got longer decks, extending the car eight and a half inches, and all Cadillacs got quad headlights and optional air ride suspension. The DeVille became its own model for 1959, but it still shared its 130 inch wheelbase and 325 horsepower, 390 cubic inch V8 with the Model 62, simply acting as the mid trim package for standard Cadillacs. Standard features now included power brakes, windows and seats, as well as two-speed wipers and rear fender skirts. Both cloth and leather interiors were available. The styling was cleaned up for 1960, but little else changed. An all-new design arrived for 1961 with four-wheel coil springs. Dual exhaust was no longer available, but the new styling included skegs, or inverted bottom fins and remote side mirrors would be added to the standard features for 1962. New styling for 1963 saw less decorative side panels and longer fenders. The options list was longer than ever, including wool, nylon, or leather upholstery, and wood veneer trim. 1964 added a comfort control system with an automated thermostat to control heating and air conditioning and the engine was bumped up to 429 cubic inches, and horsepower was 340. And now you could get a DeVille convertible. The fins weren't exactly gone for the 1965 restyle, but they were subdued. Headlights became over-under, cargo areas got their own lighting, and seat belts became standard features. A vinyl top was now an option, and the six-window hardtop sedan was replaced by a pillared sedan. New options for 1966 included heat pads built into the seats and an AM-FM stereo. The styling got more aggressive for 1967, including forward-leaning headlights, parking lights were added to the front fenders, and sculptured body lines accented the tail fans. New standard features included clock, automatic climate control, retractable seat belts, a slide-out fuse box, and a padded dash. 
The engine was increased to 472 cubic inches and 375 horsepower for 1968, and a restyled hood and grille hid the newly recessed windshield wipers. Headlights were once again horizontal for 1969, and rear quarters and hood were extended, and the wing windows went away. Front and rear center arm rests were added, as was a locking steering column. By 1970, more than 180,000 DeVilles were being sold annually, or more than three-quarters of all Cadillacs. The 1971 restyle would set a record for interior space. The compression ratio on the 472 was reduced to run better on unleaded fuel, dropping horsepower to 345 gross. And both the convertible and the pillared sedan were gone, once again only leaving hardtops. The transition to net horsepower ratings for 1972 changed the 472's rating to 220. Energy-absorbing bumpers arrived for 1973 per new safety regulations. And airbags became an option in 1974. And there were two new trim packages. The Cabriolet with a padded Landau top and the De Elegance, which came with a plusher velour interior and deep pile carpet as well as pinstripes. 1975 got rectangular headlamps, and new standard features included power door locks, steel belted white wall radials, and door pull handles instead of straps. The 472 was replaced by the Eldorado's 500, now with 210 horsepower net. The Astro roof was a new option, a power sunroof with a sunshade. You could also order tinted glass, or a windshield washer fluid indicator. New options for 1976 included a limited slip differential, a theft deterrent system, Trackmaster auto pumping brakes, and automatic locking doors. But the airbag option went away as it was unpopular. The downsized 1977 model was three and a half inches taller, nine inches shorter, four inches narrower, and a thousand pounds lighter. The engine was downsized to only 7 liters, or 425 cubic inches, and output was 195, up 5 from the outgoing base 8.2 liter. Hardtops were gone, but both the Coupe de Ville and Sedan de Ville were still offered. Now the entry-level Cadillac, prices started at just under $10,000. 1979 added Oldsmobile's converted 350 diesel to the options list, and for 1980, the 7 liter was killed to be replaced by a 6 liter, or 368 cubic inch V8. A 252 Buick V6 was added for 1981, the first Cadillac with fewer than 8 cylinders since 1914, while the 368 got cylinder deactivation. But an industry-wide sales slump hit Cadillac pretty hard, and sales dropped in half, with the DeVille barely getting over 100,000. For 1982, a new high-technology 4100 V8 and four-speed automatic replaced the 368, and the following year the V6 was dropped. 1984 would be the last year of the rear-wheel drive DeVille, although the 84 and 85 models overlapped in both production and sales, and the old body would carry on as the more expensive Fleetwood Brougham until 1992. The new front-wheel drive version was 195 inches long on an 111-inch wheelbase. The 4100 remained the primary engine choice, but a 4.3-liter diesel V6 was optional. For 1986, it got anti-lock brakes and an available car phone. A touring package was also added with a more European flavor for those that wanted it. By 1987, prices were over $21,000, and the headlights were composite, with prices jumping nearly $2,000 the following year, when the high-technology engine was up to 4.5 liters. The cars got updated styling for 1989, and the driver's side airbag returned to the options list. It became standard the following year, but the telescopic column went away at the same time. The HTV8 was up to 4.9 liters and 200 horsepower for 1991, and a spring edition brought back the padded vinyl roof. Speed-sensitive steering and suspension became standard for 93, but only 5,000 Coupe DeVille sold that year, making it the last year of the two-door DeVille. 
The new Sedan DeVille of 1994 essentially became a more formal-looking version of the smaller Saville. Added features included dual-zone climate control, digital instrumentation, and steering wheel controls. While base models continued on with the HT4900, the Concours replaced the Touring Sedan and got the new 270 horsepower North Star system. For 1996, the North Star became the only engine, with the Concours getting 300 horsepower and continuously variable road sensing suspension. For 1997, the Sedan DeVille simply became the DeVille, and the more expensive Fleetwood became the DeVille de Elegance. Freshened styling included the removal of the fender skirts, while interior updates included additional airbags and available OnStar, a subscription communications and security system. The all-new design for 2000 had improved aerodynamics and night vision integrated with the heads-up display, and heated massage seats were added as an option. The DeVille de Elegance became the DeVille High Luxury Sedan, or DHS, and the Concours once again became the DeVille Touring Sedan, or DTS, the next generation of 2006, all of which were now the DTS, with the full DeVille name no longer being used, in spite of the car being little more than a styling update. Leather power seats were standard, with optional heating and cooling, as well as optional DVD navigation, adaptive cruise control, and Magna Ride suspension. Top models were now called the Platinum Edition. But sales were dropping, soon to be below 50,000. It would make the end of its long run in 2012, but its replacement, the XTS, didn't really do any better. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below and like and subscribe.